Uh, very welcome to this session, afternoon session, that we will talk about lock shields. Uh, lock shields one of the largest exercises in the world in cyber defense. And uh, quite a big exercise, actually. And with me tonight, uh, this afternoon, um, and the agenda here, we have Commander Michael Widman from the center. He's head of the strategy branch. He will, uh, after my introduction, actually talk about what is the center. And when we say in the center, we mean this NATO Cooperative Cyber Defense Center of Excellence in Tallinn. After Mike, it's coming the green team leader for Lockshields, Silver Sachs, uh, talk about how we build the infrastructure, what we have there, and some of the special system as well. Uh, then we have the infrastructure and have the, the cyber range. And in the cyber range, the red team is hacking in and doing some fun stuff. And Sandra Badon from the center, technology research at the center, uh, will talk about the red team activities, what they're doing and planning and so on. After the red team, we need to have some people actually that defending this cyber range. So we have uh, two guys here from Sweden, uh, the team leader, Mr. Erik Biverot, team leader for the blue team in Sweden, and his deputy, Johan uh, Nilsson from the Swedish authority, the Swedish police authority as well. Uh, Erik coming from Defense University here in Sweden. Um, after that, it's time for some coffee break, and depending on how it goes here, you will have a longer or shorter coffee break. But 3.45 is starting, sharply 3.45, is starting with the situation awareness and what we are measuring and all that kind of things. And this, Mr. Jarko Hurtinen from Finland is uh, head of solution on Arctic security. We've been into the uh, exercise for a long time. Uh, and the last presentation is that we was tasked actually a couple of years ago to bring in a strategic com component into the exercise. The exercise is a technical exercise. The classical lock sheets is a technical exercise. But bringing in the strategic part. And Mike will uh, end this uh, presentations today talking about what are we doing in the strategic exercise and how we do actually connect to the technical exercise in this. And then we have also a Q&A if, if it's more questions or we end for the day. In this. So, myself, I'm Thomas Svensson. Uh, I'm the deputy head of national security at Telia Company. Uh, been hanging around for info and IT security for a long time and also been into the exercise from the really beginning in this. I'm also the deputy white team leader for Lock Shields in this. So I try to handle these guys actually in the exercise. This. Uh, my email address is just first name, last name. Uh, the last email address is not working any longer. For those of you that was on the bang email time, the bang addresses, if you recognize that, before the internet, actually DNS. The history of Lock Shields. Actually, it started 27 of April 2007. What happened then was that was riot in Tallinn. Uh, it's ending up with a bronze so soldier, the movement of the bronze so soldier from the center of Tallinn to the more outskirts of Tallinn. And the following was that Estonia was actually suffering from a large scale uh, distribu distributed uh, denial of service attack. And that was actually the starting point for, for the exercise. But in that time, there was a discussion between Sweden and Estonia. They asked from uh, government side, actually, how could we train to handle this type of attacks? So Sweden and Estonia, and it was uh, FMI in Sweden, FY in Sweden, and the Defense University as well, together with CIVAC in uh, Estonia. CIVAC was before actually the NATO center was set up there. So we had an exercise 2008. In some sense, it was a great success with this, that exercise. Nothing really works. So we got a lot of lessons learned. 
from that. But you learn by mistakes, actually, and, and we did every mistake we could do, actually. So in 2010, in Baltic Cyber Shield, we have a quite good exercise, and actually the structure of that exercise has been the base for lock shields ever since. Uh, as a fun fact, actually, uh, the Blue Team 5 in the Baltic Cyber Shield that won that exercise, the winning team, the blue team leader was Robert Malmgren, one of the founders of this conference. So he's been in to the beginning here. And then we move on from 2012, we were called Lock Shields. I was running from the NATO center in this. And you see in 2019, there was 23 blue teams. We have more than 1,100 people in the blue teams sitting around Europe about 207 team in the white team, yellow team, green team, red team we're doing the exercise control of it. Here we have lock shields. Uh, we have three main, three planning conference actually, one day each, some uh, webinars. We have a test run, we we call partner run, which actually we doing the exercise for one day with 10 blue teams. These 10 blue teams is often larger than what we're doing nationally in Sweden, for example, when we're doing an exercise. So the, this partner run is actually an exercise itself. Um, blue team got some time to uh, look into the infrastructure and there's some red team activities as well. This is the whole life cycle for one year of lock shades. Starting in September with brainstorming and ending with the after action review meeting we have in May. The organization, white team is this uh, exercise control team and trying to hold everything together. In the white team we have some sub teams in which we not will deal in today actually. Stratcom is media. We have real journalists actually acting in the exercise, talking to the blue teams. We have a legal play with lawyers in to look into the lawyers for in the cyber world. Uh, scenario injects, we have a scoring team to put together all the scoring parts of it. We have a huge forensic game in this. Uh, it takes like two days full work to, to solve most of the things in this forensic game. And we also have a special investigation team to look into if someone is breaking the rules or we can give negative points or we can give positive points. So if, if the fault is uh, silver screen team doing some nasty things for the blue teams, something like that. And this special um, scoring is that uh, the lead here, Dr. Ryan Otis from uh, Tallinn Technical University, um, and myself is doing the judgment, actually. So I will end up with a short video so we get the crash course of lock sheets before we digging into the, the NATO center, and the green team, the red team, the blue team, and the yellow team in this. So let's see if this will work. Welcome to Tallinn, Estonia the home of NATO's Cooperative Cyber Defense Center of Excellence. Locked Shields Exercise Headquarters is set up in the heart of the city, where a hotel is transformed into a battleground for the largest and most complex cyber defense exercise in the world. The organizers have spent more than 96,000 man-hours to prep this year's game with their partners the growing list of which includes both tiny startups and the giants of the tech and military industries. Good morning, cyber warriors around the world. Welcome to Lock Shields 2019. At the toughest cyber exercise in the world, it's not important whether you're civilian or military. The only thing that matters is the color of your t-shirt. First and foremost, the red team, their task to stage elaborative and complex cyber attacks against a fictional country. The international live fire exercise scenario continues to build on last year's situation that escalated to the brink of war. 
the Red Team has launched their cyber attacks. And the game is on. In the modern battlefield, there are those relying on the integrity of data on the ground, at sea, and in the skies. The networks they depend on need protection. During the Locked Shields cyber exercise, that defensive role is left to one force. The Blue Teams The Blue Teams consist of more than a thousand cyber defense experts, data analysts, experts from the intelligence community, military professionals, and more from nearly 30 countries. This is their playground. Although all of the Blue Teams remain in their respective countries all over the world, from Finland to the US, from Greece to the United Kingdom, at the same time, they share the common cyber battleground live. If people normally think cyber, they think that are uh, computers or hackers attacking computers or hackers. But as we can see here, normally the attacks are directed against vital systems in our societies. We have seen that this is really a, a huge thing. It's, it's complex. It's, um, it's done by really experts. So for us, it's a perfect chance to test our products here. Locked Shields is constantly evolving. Our growing network of controlled chaos includes various military, defense, academic, and business partners. Whatever you do, don't remain on the sidelines.